Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. Let us include in our prayers the following intentions flashed on the screen. Welcome to our Eucharistic celebration. We are on the 29th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our Mass presider is Reverend Father Joseph Landero. Please stand and let us join the choir in singing the entrance song.
Let us begin the celebration in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brethren, on this 29th Sunday in Ordinary Time, the Church also celebrates World Mission Sunday with the theme, Mission at the Heart of the Christian Faith. And so as we pray for whatever personal intentions we have, let us include the intentions of all missionaries all over the world. And at the same time, let us ask the Lord to make us His missionaries wherever we are, even here in our own homeland. To be worthy of this celebration, let us now call to mind our sins. Let us humbly ask for pardon and let us ask for mercy and strength. All together, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest.
us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, grant that we may always conform our will to yours and serve your majesty in sincerity of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to his anointed Cyrus, whose right hand I grasp, subduing nations before him, and making kings run in his service, opening doors before him, and leaving the gates unbarred. For the sake of Jacob, my servant of Israel, my chosen one, I have called you by your name, giving you a title, though you knew me not. I am the Lord, and there is no other. There is no God besides me. It is I who arm you, though you know me not, so that toward the rising and the setting of the sun, people may know that there is none besides me. I am the Lord. There is no other. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Give the Lord glory and honor. Give the Lord glory and honor. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, all you lands. Tell his glory among the nations. Among all peoples, his wondrous deeds. Give the Lord glory and honor. For great is the Lord and highly to be praised. Awesome is he beyond all gods. For all the gods of the nations are things of naught, but the Lord made the heavens. Give the Lord glory and honor. Give to the Lord, you families of nations, Give to the Lord glory and praise. Give to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring gifts and enter his courts. Give the Lord glory and honor. Worship the Lord in holy attire. Tremble before him all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord is king. He governs the peoples with equity. Give the Lord glory and honor. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy to the church of the Thessalonians in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We give thanks to God always for all of you, remembering you in our prayers unceasingly calling to mind your work of faith and labor of love and endurance in hope of our Lord Jesus Christ before our God and Father, knowing brothers and sisters loved by God how you were chosen. For our gospel did not come to you in word alone, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with much conviction. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. in the world as you hold on to the word of life.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. The Pharisees went off and plotted how they might entrap Jesus in speech. They sent their disciples to him with the Herodians saying, Teacher, we know that you are a truthful man and that you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. And you are not concerned with anyone's opinion, for you do not regard a person's status. Tell us then, what is your opinion? Is it lawful to pay the census tax to Caesar or not? Knowing their malice, Jesus said, Why are you testing me, you hypocrites? Show me the coin that pays the census tax. Then they handed him the Roman coin. He said to them, Whose image is this and whose inscription? They replied, Caesar's. At that, Jesus said to them, Then give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and to God what belongs to God. Sisters and brothers, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Good morning to everyone. Balingan po natin ang ating mga katabi. Let's give them a smile. Let's greet them. Ate, kuya, good morning, brother, sister. I'm happy that you are here with me to join the celebration, especially in worshiping the Lord and thanking God. Amen? There is a story about an old man who went to the barber. Pupunta po siya sa barbero, matanda na siya. But when the barber saw him, the barber was dismayed and he felt insulted. Na insulto yung barbero because he saw that the old man who came to his barber shop only had eight strands of hair. Walo na lang po yung natitirang buhok. Kaya napaisip yung barbero, anong gagawin ko dito? So he asked the old man, Shall I count your hair or shall I cut your hair? Kahit sampu sa dalawa, madaling gawin. Pero nalilito siya, ano gagawin niya? But the old man smiled at the barber and told him, Please do not count my hair. Please do not cut also my hair. But please color my hair. Kulayan mo yung aking natitirang walong Book na lamang. You know, it's a very simple story, but the moral of the story is clear. In life, we do not need to count what we have. We also do not need to look for what we do not have. Huwag na po nating bilangin kung anong meron tayo. Huwag na rin po nating hanapin kung anong wala. But let us be thankful for the gift of life. Amen? That we are alive and we are all here. Praise the Lord. Because our life is God's gift to us. So in the gospel where we heard about Saint, from St. Saint Matthew, the Pharisees plotting against Jesus, wanting to entrap Jesus. So they sent their disciples to him. And... They asked Jesus, is it lawful to pay the census tax to Caesar or not? Caesar stands for the ruler at the time, like the emperor, the governor, when they were under the Roman rulers. And so, he stands for the government. And what Jesus did was, they, he asked for a coin. And when they handed Jesus the Roman coin, he asked them the question, whose image is this? and whose inscription. And of course, it is the inscription and the image of Caesar that is found there. So Jesus told them, then give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and give to God what belongs to God. Come to think of it, brothers and sisters, what is it 
that belongs to God in our life now. Of course, our very own life, our good health, our blessings, our readiness to forgive, to love, to serve, and most especially, our faith, they all belong to God. But God wants us that while we are here on earth, we are also good and honest citizens of our country. But as we become good and honest citizens of our country, we should never neglect that the first to be prioritized in our life is none other than God Himself. Amen? Why? Because our life comes from God. That's why we hear perhaps the saying, our life is God's gift to us. What we do with our life is our gift to God. Ang buhay po natin, regalo ng Diyos sa atin. Kaya kung paano natin ito isinasabuhay at pag sinabuhay natin na maayos, ito rin ang regalo natin pabalik sa Diyos. So it's not enough that we exist. More than that, it is more important that we live. And living in a meaningful way means living with God. That God is part and parcel of our life. That God is at the center and the first priority of our life. Then our life will be colorful. And we can give also color to the lives of others. Last Saturday in my parish in San Isidro, uh, katabi ng SM South Mall. And I'm also adjusting. We had the reshuffle last July 2 of the priests in the Diocese of uh, Paranaque. Si Brother Brendel is our seminarian in our Diocese in Paranaque, studying in Don Bosco. And nag adjust ako kasi sa pinanggalingan ko pong parokya. It's in Sukat. It's just beside Loyola Memorial Park. Anim na taon po ako doon. Tahimik, sariwang hangin, nasa gilid lang yung basketball court. Anytime I can play. At bakit tahimik? Kasi yung likod ko, puro patay. Puro mga lapida, mausoleum. Namiss ko yung buhay ko doon for six years. Because every day when I wake up, I look through my window, and nakikita ko mga lapida, mausoleum. For six years, I feel like I was having a recollection every day. And the topic is all about death. <laughs> Kaya sabi ko, paglipat ko doon sa gilid ng SM, exactly the opposite. Maingay, maraming tao, wala na mga puno. When I look through my window, nakikita ko, SM, puro bato, semento. But I told myself, I have to bloom where I am planted. After I obeyed, I did not ask for that assignment, but how I wish it could be another assignment. But God placed me there. I said, I have to go on with my ministry like a missionary. Missionaries, they give color not only to their own, their own lives, but to the lives of other people. Today is World Mission Sunday. And when I was still studying in Don Bosco, I really wanted to be a missionary, but I was never accepted. And when we were ordained, one of my classmates was sent to Pakistan, another to Papua New Guinea, a third one to Taiwan in China, but in Taiwan. And I envied them. But more and more in my ministry, in almost 21 years as a priest, I realized we do not need to go far away to a different country to be a missionary because every Christian is a missionary and every heart is a mission land. Na bawat Kristiyano ay misyonero at bawat puso ay lugar kung saan tayo pwedeng magmisyon. Like dito sa feast, sa family, sa workplace, in your community. When you interact with people, you can be a missionary. And that's one way of giving color, not only to your life, but to the lives of other people. Yesterday, we commemorated the fifth 
anniversary of the canonization of our second Filipino saint. Sino po ba ang ating second Filipino saint? Si San Pedro Kalungsod. Sino po ang una? Si San Lorenzo Ruiz. They are all lay persons. Hindi pare, hindi brother. Ang dami nyo dito mga lay. Pagpasok ko dito, marami ang upuan. Konti ang tao. Nagulat ako. Ngayon naguhubili na ako. Konti na lang ang upuan. Madami ng tao. And you are called to share the good news wherever you are, even here in our own country. Like this too. Si San Pedro Kalungsod, he went to Guam. And that's where he died as a martyr, like a missionary. And you know, yesterday was his fifth anniversary when he was canonized last 2012. And I feel sad. Personally, it's a loss for me because Cardinal Vidal also died. He ordained me almost 21 years ago. And kahit nakabase ako sa Maynila, I would pass by Cebu at least once a year. I would see him. Hindi niya ako nakakalimutan. Kinakamusta niya ako. Tinatanong, how are you? Are you still doing your best as a priest, trying to spread the good news, to make Jesus known? And so, to me, he's not only a father, a father, but firm, but a missionary, a model to all of us. So kahapon, nilipat yung kanyang mga labi doon sa Archbishop's residence where he stayed for 21, 29 years as Archbishop of Cebu to coincide with the fifth anniversary of the canonization of Pedro Calungsod, whom he did, where he did his best, he worked so hard so that he will be canonized as our second Filipino saint. And people in Cebu are lining up despite the rain, bringing umbrella, lining up para masilayan lang si Cardinal Vidal. Kanyang mga labi before he would be buried this coming October 26. He's just very small in stature, but he has a big heart and he has done many good things also for our country in his own silent and unassuming ways. And you know, in his life, when he was still a seminarian, he almost gave up because he was always sickly. Galing po siyang Mindoro, di siya Cebuano. And he was always sickly, he always got sick. One time, he passed by the seminary, he said, Lord, I feel that I'm, calling, I'm being called by you to become a priest. But how can I become a priest if I'm always sickly? I am not healthy. Give me a good health and I will serve you as your priest. And the rest is history. Umabot siya ng 86 years old when he died. And how he is, as a priest, a good example of being a missionary priest to all of us. Kaya nung siya nag-retire, the Cebuanos loved him so much. They never wanted him to leave. So they gave him a house where he would stay until he died a few days ago. So we have with us examples of Filipinos who are missionaries here in our own homeland. And so, dear friends, as we pray for all missionaries, we are also being challenged also to be missionaries where we are right now. If we color our life, we can also color the lives of others, like the story I shared with you. And that can happen when we bring with us Jesus, when we preach the good news, when we are not ashamed to proclaim the kingdom of God here on earth. I mentioned to you last week in my parish, nagkaroon kami ng LSS, attended by our parish servants, our parish volunteers. Ang dami pong magagandang talks, marami magagandang sharing. One of those who shared, sabi niya, you know, I had everything in life. I enjoyed my life. What I wanted, I got them. And I planned my life according to how I wanted my life to be. Then suddenly someone posed to me this question, and the question is, what are you doing here on earth with your life? Anong ginagawa mo sa buhay mo ngayon? And I realized it was all about me. Never about God, never about other people. So, sabi niya, from now on, I'll change my life. 
is not just enough to pray and to live my life according to my own will, but to ask the Lord, Lord, what is my mission? What is my mission that you entrusted to me? What is that mission you are giving to me? So from then on, mas naging palasimba siya, nagsiserve siya sa parish niya, sa community niya, at mas naglilingkod siya sa kanyang kapwa. At sabi niya, I am now living a meaningful and colorful life. So that is the challenge for all of us. Because as I said, our life is God's gift to us. What we do with our life is our gift also to God. May we color our life and color the lives of others by becoming missionaries where we are. Because every Christian is a missionary and every heart is a mission land. May God bless us all. Please let stand. us stand. Let us now profess our faith. I believe in God. The Father the Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Prayers of the faithful, let us turn in prayer to God our Father, through the Lord Jesus Christ, His Son, who promises all we need, and much more if we seek first the kingdom of heaven. With confidence we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For our Holy Father and church leaders, may they seek new ways of proclaiming the gospel and continue to speak out fearlessly for justice and peace, freedom and responsibility, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our civil leaders and politicians, may they recognize their dependence on God as the source of all authority and dedicate themselves wholeheartedly to the well-being of our people, especially the poor, the weak, and the marginalized, we pray. Lord, hear, Lord, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all the faithful, May they take up their duty to assist the missionary work of the church, especially the pontifical mission societies by their prayers, sacrifices, and financial aid, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all Christian families, may they become effective agents of evangelization by being active in parish life by being involved in, in service to others, and by being witnesses to the gospel, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us, may we realize that we are pilgrims in this world. May we cherish and use the gifts of your creation to establish a reign of love, justice, and peace. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, we humbly ask you to hear our petitions and help us to live in accord with the truth that sets us free in your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated.
brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for good and the good of all His holy church. O Lord, we pray, grant us a sincere respect for your gifts, that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them off to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. Through Christ our Lord, for by His birth He brought renewal to humanity's fallen state. And by his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life. And by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we now sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Make holy, therefore, the gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray 
that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Jesse, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him, with Him, and in Him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. With confidence in God our Father, we now pray the prayer Jesus taught us. Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always be from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not at our sins but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer to each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Oh, 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Jesus who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Brothers and sisters, I invite you to stand up as we continue to bask in the Lord's wonderful presence in this holy sacrifice that He has given us. I invite you to lift up your hands and just continue to feel His wonderful presence. Lord, you have called us by name for a special mission. And we know, Lord, that though many obstacles will come our way, you will guide us and we will know that we will rise victorious as we go forth in the mission field where you have brought us because you are the God who will never fail this we claim this we believe and this we know sing it out in faith this we know we will see the enemy run this we know, we will see the victory come. We hold on to every promise you ever made. Jesus, you are unfair. Sing it again. This we know. This we know, we will see the end run. This we know.
praise you Jesus glory to you alone hallelujah Let us pray. O Lord, we pray, grant that benefiting from participation in heavenly things, we may be helped by what you give us in this present age and prepared for the gifts that are eternal. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Please bow your heads and let's invoke God's blessings. O Lord, we pray, graciously enlighten your family gathered here, their loved ones who cannot be here, and their intentions, that by holding fast to what is pleasing to you, they may be worthy to accomplish all that is good as your missionaries. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. The Mass is offered. Let us go to... ...one is invited to stay and join the feast that will follow right after the Mass. In behalf of the entire Feast Value AM family, we would like to thank our Mass presider, Reverend Father... Ikaw'y ang ating kamay Sumunod at sumayaw Ang ating paa Magpasalamat na tayo Sama-sama sa piling ng Diyos
that perfectly well. You believe with all your heart you're different now. You're better now. The power of God is moving in your life. Calling all the youth in this house, in this ballroom, you are all invited to join our youth high to be held in Laguna Ballroom 1 today during our first session, 9 a.m. Can you just follow our youth here in front so you can join the fun? Thank you. around you good morning good morning today as we start to worship I'm gonna invite you to declare powerful statements today how many of you would like to become victorious oh yeah hallelujah today the enemy would like to 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 steal our joy to steal our our hope in Jesus so today I want to invite you to declare that the enemy has no stronghold in our lives. Starting today, if you feel that you are the one I'm referring to, I want you to declare to the enemy that today is not his day. So if you feel like you don't like you don't feel like praying today, tell the enemy out loud, not today. Say it, not today. If you feel like you're losing hope, tell the enemy, not today. Come on, make it louder. If you feel like you are stricken by sickness or afraid of sickness in the family and you, you lost the fight to carry on, tell the enemy, not today. Not today. Not today. If you feel like breaking down and you feel that like you're not going to break through, tell the enemy, not today. Not today. Come on, put your hands together as we praise and let the enemy tremble at the feet of Jesus. Oh God. 
a song that will never die. I know your love is the reason why. I'll sing the night into the morning. I'll sing the fear into your praise. I'll sing my soul into your presence. Whenever I say your name, let the devil know not today. We declare this in faith. Not today. Yes, thank you. I believe all of us have failed one time or many times. And this, I want to tell you this powerful truth because the enemy is such a deceiving and a cunning devil and he will rob all, our, all the truths that we know, all the joy in our heart. And the devil will let us know that we are failures. But I want you to tell you the truth that we may fail but we are never failures. We are never losers. We are winners. We are champions. We are victors in Christ. Amen. Ask me why. Because the blood and the body of Jesus paid for the prize and made us victors in Him. And He said in His word that greater is He that is in me, that is in you, that is in all of us, than in He that is in the world and we have God in us and our God never fails come on give the Lord a big hand for his victory his love has overcome let's come before his presence in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit Amen Jesus by your sacrifice you have saved us you have called us your own and we know that you are in us right now 
therefore we may fail but we are never a failure we will remain victorious because you are the God who never fails when you say your promise you will deliver when you say you're gonna rise up from the dead you 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 made the enemy tremble oh we praise you Jesus for your unfailing
You will be faithful and you will carry out to completion the work that you have started in us, Jesus. And so we declare boldness and trust in you. For we know, Lord, that just at the sound of your name, the enemy shall flee. And we know, Lord, that whatever it is that we hold in our hearts right now, whatever pain, whatever doubt, whatever worries we have right now, you, you have already paid the price. And so we declare that all your promises will come true.
Hug them and tell them your God is unfailing. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Are you ready to be blessed today? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's pray our favorite prayer together. Today, I receive all of God's love for me. Today, I open myself to the unbounded, limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today, I open myself to God's blessings, healing, and miracles. Today, I open myself to God's Word so that I become more like Jesus every day. Today, I proclaim that I am God's beloved, I am God's servant, I am God's powerful champion. And because I am blessed, I am blessing the world in Jesus' name. Amen. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. We are going to talk about oppression. Sabi niyo nga, oppression. Tignan nyo nga yung katabi nyo kung mukhang oppressed or depressed or... Today is the third installment ha, of the talk, Angels and Demons. So, the title is Oppression. How do we fight evil? How do we fight evil? Let's read together in Ephesians. Can you see it on screen? Read with me. Finally, build up your strength in union with the Lord and by means of His mighty power. A lot of people think that fighting the devil means becoming an exorcist. Alam niyo exorcist, di ba? Yung nagpapalaya ng masasamang espiritu. Yung mga sumisigaw ng malakas na malakas. In Jesus' name, get out, Satan. Ganyan, merong ganyan, nag over. In Jesus' name, get out, Satan. Get out, in Jesus' name. Get out, Jesus. Get out, Jesus. E, mali, no? Si Jesus tuloy yung nawala, no? But according to St. Paul, the one we read, that's not the way to do it. How do we fight the devil? The answer is what we read. You need to unite yourself with Jesus more. That is how you fight the devil. We are always in a battle. But how do we fight? We need to unite ourselves with Jesus more. What does it mean? You need to hang out with Jesus so much, you begin to act like Him, talk like Him, serve like Him, and love like Him. Union with Jesus means that when people see you, they mistake you for Jesus. Yung nakita ka, tapos akala ikaw ang Diyos. Kasi yung kilos mo, yung salita, that's how you fight it. So at the end of the day, your greatest weapon is discipleship. Sabi nga, discipleship. And the only way to fight the devil is to follow Jesus. Sabi nyo nga sa tatlong tao sa tabi nyo, sabi mo, follow Jesus, follow Jesus, follow Jesus, follow Jesus. Put your hands over your heart, close your eyes, and bow on your head. And pray this prayer after me. Jesus, I want to follow you. I will listen to you. And I know I will win. And I believe I will receive your miracles today in your name, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Give the Lord a big hand and bless His name. Thank you, Jesus. Speak to your people. As you sit down, tell people around you, you are a winner.
One big message of this talk is this. Show it to them. You're bigger than you think you are. Humanap ka nga ng mataba-taba konti na katabi mo. Ha? Eh, biro lang. You are bigger than what you think you are. Do you agree? Yes? I'm going to talk about spiritual warfare in a way you probably never heard before. Yung mga nasa community na baka magulat kayo sa sasabihin ko. Ha? In this talk, I like to answer the question, what's the best way for you to fight evil? Is it holy water? Diba? Pag kami nakita kayo, ito parang mukhang demonyo, hinuholy water nyo ba? Ganyan, no? Is that the thing to fight? What's the best way for you to fight evil? Is it the Benedict Medal? Ay, meron ako niyan. Marami akong holy water sa bahay. Nagmumumog ako minsan ng holy water. Ha? Is it the statue of the Blessed Mary? Is it a relic of the Holy Cross? Naalala nyo noon na pag may mga takutan, nanggaganyanan tayo, di ba? Uy, ganyan, ganyan, ganyan. Tapos sa panood ko sa TV, noon pa ha, this is an old movie. Merong vampire movie, tapos nung nagpakita yung, ah, nakaganoon na yung may pangil, ginanoon niya ng cross. Tapos sabi nung vampire, ah, <laughs> hinawakan yung cross. Tapos kinuha sa kamay nung may hawak. Tapos alam mo sabi nung vampire, Wala yan sa krus. Nasa pananampalataya mo yan. Tapos sabi nung tao, sabi niya, hindi krus yan. Wire yan. Tapos sinwitch na kuryente, tuloy yung bambay, patay. <laughs> diba? The power is not in the object, but in the faith that the object inspires. Holy objects are useful if they inspire us to follow Jesus. Because the only way to defeat the devil, to fight it, is to follow Jesus. You have to know this, huh? It is to follow Jesus. In the same way, in the same way, if your faith is weak and your fear is strong, some objects open yourself to demonic influence. Kaya, Mag-iingat-ingat din. Ha? Hindi porkit sinabi ko ngayon na, Oy, I'm bigger than I think I am. Eh. So pwede ko nang subok-subukan yung mga tarot cards na yan. Yung mga Ouija board. Alam nyo yan? Yung mga spirit of the class. You have to be wise. Sabi nyo nga, be wise. Avoid all forms of witchcraft. Avoid. Pag alam mong witchcraft, huwag mong galawin niya, huwag mong hawakan niya, huwag kang, do, don't dwell on it. Avoid playing the occultic games. Ouija, spirit of the glass. Huwag na. You know, some, they experience the supernatural because they believe that when, when they do this, the ghost of the dead person will appear to them and speak to them. Diba alam niyo yan, yung pupuntahan mo tapos, gusto kong kausapin yung aking asawa na namatay. Oh, sige. <laughs> diba, naalala niyo, yung mga ganyan, diba? Meron pang isa, oh, ako, ang Santo Nino. Maghuhulat ka, kalaki-laki mong tao, Santo Nino ka. Pingik hindi. Ha? Pingik hindi. Oh, hindi. Hindi. Ah, Kendi. Santo Nino de Cebu pala yun. <laughs> diba? But some of these are demons pretending to be these dead people that we love. Ha? Huwag kayo masyadong naniniwala sa ganyan. Please, again, stop watching horror movies. Ako, I stopped it already. Tumigil na ako, kagabi yung huli ko. Ha? Stop watching it. Bakit? They will play in your minds. Tama ba ako? Maglalaro yan sa isip mo. Yung mga kaedad ko rito, tingnan nyo, nung pinanood natin si Chucky, after that, lahat ng manika, takot na tayo. Diba? Sasaksakin ako niyan, manika. Pag nakakita ka ng batang may hawak na manika, ay, ganun ka na. Diba? Kahit kakanood. Kaya anong ginawa? Sinaksak mo si Chucky, ginawa mong chocolate drink. Diba? 
Meron pa. Pag nagising ka sa umaga, hindi ka makabanyo. Kahit iwiwi-wiwi ka na. Bakit? Kasi pag nagbanyo ako, baka may dumaan. Ganon. Naalala nyo yon? Kakanood ng TV. Naalala ko yung mag-ama, nag-usap. Sabi nung anak niya, Daddy, may multo ba sa ating kusina? Sabi nung daddy, Nako, sino may sabi sa'yo niyan? Sabi ni Mami, Nako anak, huwag kang maniniwala. Walang multo sa ating kusina. Ang mabuti pa, samahan mo na lang ako sa kusina, inom ako tubig. <laughs> Kita niyo, <laughs> di ba? Pero pa, nag-uusap yung daddy at anak. Daddy, totoo ba ang multo? Sabi nung daddy, Nako, sino na namang may sabi sa'yo niyan? Si Yaya, sabi nung daddy, Nako, wala tayong Yaya. You do not need these useless things in your life. You don't. You don't. Why? For God is enough for you. Be satisfied with the Lord. Huh? Be satisfied with God. You don't need the occult. You don't need the witchcraft. Yung iba, halika, crush ko, hindi ako pinapansin, maghalo-halo tayo. No, para maamoy niya. No, anong tawag doon? Yung ha? Gayuma. Ba't alam niyo? Ha? Di ba? Talaga, be satisfied with God because God is enough. Sinaktan ka ng kaaway mo, then forgive. Yung iba kukuha pa ng manika, tapos gutos ako sa akin. God is enough for you. Sabi mo sa katabi mo yan, God is enough for you. And just to remind you, the most powerful weapon against evil is discipleship. It is following Jesus. It is love. It is forgiveness. It is humility. It is compassion. It is acceptance. It is sacrifice. Let me tell you a story in the Bible to inspire you how to fight the devil. This is a famous story between David and Goliath. So Goliath was the champion of the Philistines. Alam niyo kung gano'n siya kataas? Nine feet and nine inches. Ako po ay six feet tall. Dagdagan niyo ako ng almost four feet pa. Ganun kalaki si Goliath. Tapos full body armor niya. May tagahawak pang alalay ng kanyang mga uh, sword bearer. Ganun. Tapos hinahamon niya ang, ang bayan ng Diyos. Sinong lalaban? Sabi niya ganyan, Goliath challenged the Israelites every morning and evening for 40 days. Goliath came forward and challenged the Israelites that he had done before. And David, ito na, dumating si David, heard him. And when the Israelites saw Goliath, they ran away in terror. Parang ganito, for 40 days, nanunood sila ng telenovela. Ito mga sundalo ng Diyos, sumisigaw si Goliath, prime time TV yan. Tapos nangangatog sila sa umaga. Sa gabi, nire-replay nila yon. Kasi nakikipagkwentuhan sila saan? Sa isa't isa, grabe yung sigaw ni Goliath kanina. Nakakatakot, parang mas malakas kaysa kahapon. Grabe, sobra. And, and do you know why people are defeated by the devil? It is the same thing. Because they get preoccupied with what the devil is doing. You have to listen to me, ha? Kasi iisa-isahin ko tong laban na to. At dito ko gustong tingnan nyo paano natin lalabanan ang kalaban, ha? The problem with being defeated by the devil, it is easy, you are easily defeated or they are easily defeated because they listen to what the devil is saying. They listen to what Goliath was saying. David won. Nanalo. Because he did the very opposite thing. Ito na. Sabing ganyan. Look at him. They said to each other, listen to his challenge, King Saul. Has promised, sabi ganyan, King Saul has promised to give a big reward to the man who kills Goliath. The king will also give him his daughter to marry and will not require his father's family to pay taxes. Tapos David asked the men who were near him, What will the man get who kills this Philistine and frees Israel from this disgrace? Alam nyo, Kaya nanalo si David because first, 
he was late in the battle. Sabi nyo nga, late. Tingnan nyo yung katabi nyo kung madalas late yan. Ha? Alam nyo yan eh, no? Late yan sa trabaho, paggising, no? May advantage din pala ang late. Dumakakadating lang niya eh. Sila, 40 days na. 40 days nang pinakikinggan yung higante siya, dumating. Kakadating lang on the 40th day. Kaya bigla siyang ano, kaya kaya, kaya, kaya niya labanan. Because he was just sent by his father to bring food for his brothers. So pagdating niya doon, he was not able to catch all 40 shows. Di niya napanood, di niya narinig ng 40 days, kakadating lang eh, which is a good thing. You know, I know people who get defeated by the enemy because they keep on listening to the enemy. The enemy will whisper in your ears, wala kang kwenta, wala, ikaw naman, wala nga, wala. Hindi bagay sa'yo yan. Hindi nga. No? Umaaten ka ng feast. Ako, walang kwenta yan. Walang, uh, ikaw din, hindi ka bagay dito. Tinan mo, itsura mo. Oo nga, uh, hotel to. Ikaw, mukhang basahan. Oo nga, uh, ayun na. Nakikinig, nakikinig ng nakikinig. They are preoccupied by how powerful the giant is. And look at what David noticed. Yun ang gusto ko dito eh. He was not paying attention to what the giant was saying. Sigaw ng sigaw yung higante. Sigaw ng sigaw. He was paying attention not to the giant. He was paying attention to what the king was giving. Sumisigaw yung higante. Sino lalaban sa akin yan? Ang tinatanong niya, pag, pag napatay to, anong mananal? Anong makukuha? Anong premyo? Ulit-ulitin nyo nga. Ano pa? Tapos tanong siya, talaga? Ibibigay ba talaga yun ang ha? Sigaw ng sigaw yung higante. Hindi niya pinapansin. Do not focus on what your enemy is doing. Focus on what your king is doing. ba? Problema, problema. Ay, tingnan mo yung biyaya. Ay, ang dami ko rin namang biyaya eh. Kasi kung pala'y problema lang titingnan mo, wala ka na. Wala na. Talo ka kagad. Pero tingnan mo, anong ginagawa ng Diyos sa buhay mo? Kadami. Ang daming bagay. Kaya yung mga tanong ng iba, sino ba yung mahal ko o yung mahal ako? Diba? What are you focusing on? What the enemy is doing? Or what your God is doing? That is how you win the battle. And that is what David did. Focus on your God. Sabi mo sa katawin mo, focus on your God. Naalala ko yung isang matandang babae, nagdadasal siya doon sa kanyang apartment na maliit, Lord, provide for me every day, ha? Tapos malakas ang panalangin niya. Kayo na ho, magbigay sa akin ang gagastusin ko araw-araw. Sana yung mga anak ko magpadala ng pera. Ganyan. So, yung katabi niyang bahay, apartment din, atheist, hindi naniniwala sa Diyos, yung talaga, hula namang Diyos eh. eh. narinig niya yung panalangin. Ngumiti, sabi niya, <laughs> ipuprove ko rito na walang Diyos. So, nung umaga, nagdasal siya, sabi niya, Lord, yung matanda ulit, kayo na humagbigay sa akin ng kakain, kakainin ko araw-araw. Biglang nag-doorbell, ting! So, yung babae, tumigil ang dasal, binuksan niya, pagbukas niya, Meron siyang mga basket ng mga supermarket items. Tapos sabi niya, Lord, talagang you provided. Buhay ka talagang Diyos. Biglang lumabas yung kapitbahay niyang AT. Sabi niya, hindi Diyos ang nagbigay niyan. Ako yan. Sa aking galing yan. Kaya wala talagang Diyos. Sabi nung matanda, ay Lord, purihin ka kahit demonyo ginagamit mo. <laughs> Focus on what God is doing. Uulitin ko yun, ha? Doon ka tumingin. Anong ginagawa ng Diyos sa buhay ko? Kaysa kung ano, anong nangyayari sa buhay kong kapalpakan? Ay, tingnan mo. Hindi lang minamatch ni Lord yung problema mo. Hinihigitan pa. Amen. Nako kung ako yan, pumalakpak na ako kanina pa. How David fought Goliath was how he fought other battles. Right before he fought the giant, he had a conflict with his brother Eliab. Ito na, mag-uumpisa na yung laban. 
At ganito ang ginawa ni David. Eliab, David's oldest brother, heard David talking to the men. Na nakikipag-usap, paano kung matalo ko yan? Anong premyo ko? Ah, yung ba talaga? Paano kung matpatay yan? Anong premyo? Narinig ng kapatid. At sabi ng kapatid, he became angry and he said, What are you doing here? Who is taking care of those sheep? Galit. Tapos, you smart Alec. Sabi ganyan. Sa Tagalog, hunghang. Sa English, tanan, 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 hunghang. Ganun yan, no? Ganun lang yan, no? Para maintindihan nyo. Binura siya ng kapatid. You just came to watch the fighting. Hindi ka nag pinag ng tatay natin. Tapos nandito ka para makaisyo. So, the most painful insults, listen to me, don't come from foes. They come from friends or family. Yung insulto ng kaaway, hindi masyado masakit yan. Ang masakit, yung mahal sa buhay. Tama o tama? These are the barbs that depress your spirit. The devil will use those closest to you to put you down. Hey, well, he will lie to you telling you you are a failure. You are a loser. You give up. May pangarap ka pag lumapit ka sa mahal mo sa buhay? Anong may pangarap ako? Anong pangarap mo, anak? Gusto kong maging doktor. Naku, anak! Di mo kaya yan. Mahina ang utak mo para kang nanay mo. Kinontra ka kaagad, di ba? Yung mga mahal mo pa. But learn how David dealt with put-downs. Ito yung ginawa niya. Now, what have I done? Sabi ni David. I can't I even ask a question? Question mark. Alam mo yung susunod niyang ginawa? He did not defend himself. He asked the question again. He turned to another man and asked him the same question. And every time he heard, he got the same answer. So, inaway siya ng kapatid niya. Ikaw talaga, hindi ka nagbabatay. Siyoso ko lang dito. Sabi niya, hindi naman pwede magtanong dito. So, ano nga mangyayari pag nanalo ako? Ha? Ano pa? Ah, talaga? Pag... Nakita niyo? Ano yung style ni David? He didn't argue. Pwede niyang sabihin, Oy, pinutusan lang ako ni, ni Papa para ibigay sa iyo itong pagkain na to. Ako pa. And he ignored Eliab. How? David turned to, the, to another man and asked about the same reward he will get when he defeats the enemy. Friend, to win the, over the devil, you ignore insults. You ignore the put-downs. You ignore false accusations. You ignore the lies. You ignore the obstacles. You ignore the devil. He exists, but he does not matter to you. Does not matter. Bakit? Because you need to focus on your dream and focus on your dream giver. Not on their shouts. Kita nyo, ang kalaban ni David hindi lang yung higante. Ang kalaban niya yung mahal na niya sa buhay na sinasabi sa kanya, muwi ka na. Umuwi ka na. Siya? Di niya pinansin. Ang pinansin niya, yung matatanggap niya pag nanalo na siya. Some say that David was an underdog. Sabi niyo nga, underdog. Gusto natin mga underdog eh, napansin nyo? Lahat ng pelikula, kampi tayo dun sa mga kawawa. Yung kawawa na biglang nanalo sa huli, gustong-gusto natin yon. But David was really not an underdog here in this story. He just appeared to be an underdog. David was really the super dog. Sabi niya, super dog. In ancient warfare, let me explain to you, there were three kinds of soldiers. The first soldier is with a sword. The second soldier is with a long-distance weapon. Pwedeng arrow, pwedeng slingshot. The third is the soldier on a horse. Saan dun sa tatlong yun si David? Yung may long-distance weapon. Alam nyo, kung ang kalaban mo ay may espada, tapos ikaw ay may pana, sino mananalo sa inyo? Yung may pana, lumayo ka lang, patay mo yan. Huwag kang lalapit dyan. Yun ang mahalaga, ha? David had a killer slingshot that slayed lions and bears. Hindi ito laruan, ha? Ang hawak niyang tirador, hindi laruan. Talagang gamit niya yan. Kapareho niya yung mga ibang sundalo. Pero sila trained. Siya, super trained. Bakit? Araw-araw niya ginagamit yan, eh. Tinitirador niya yung mga, mga nagnanakaw ng mga tupa na inaalagaan niya. And remember, 
the devil wants you to go hand in hand combat with him. He wants to bring you into his court, his battleground, his circle of influence. Please don't do that. Do this instead. Fight him from a distance. Don't go near him. Don't listen to him. Don't argue with him. Tingnan mo si Eva at si Adan. Diba? Si, Ad, si Eva, kinausap nung ahas. Sabi nung ahas, yun naman talaga yan. Anong sinabi? Huh? Huh? Ganyan. Diba? Tapos si Eva, hi, bakit? Pilipino siya eh. Hi. Tayo lang tumitingin sa sit-sit eh. Ha? Ganun, no? Ginawa ko yun eh. Nasa ano ako, train ng San Francisco. Nagsit-sit lang. Tumingin yung iba. O, oh, Pinoy, Pinoy. <laughs> Alam mo eh, no? As gawa, ganun lang ako sila naman. Ganun din. Pilip, tumingin. Tapos sa kipagkwentuhan. The only way to fight the devil is not to follow him but to follow Jesus. Kaya alam nyo ang suggestion ko sa inyo. Pag alam nyo na you are tempted so much if you are in this place, don't go there. Huwag kayong pupunta dyan. Bakit? Eh, dyan ako naaano eh. Nagkakasala eh. Pag itong mga kasama ko, palagi ako nahuhulog sa mali. Ito, ito mga to. Huwag kang masyado sumasama. Layo kayo. Sa dilim, yung may mga boyfriend-girlfriend dito, manood kayo ng sine, doon kayo sa harapan, maliwanag. Doon sa taas, madilim yan. Kaya kami nilalain, pagpasok namin ng sinehan, nung kami pa lang, yung hindi pa kami mag-asawa, sa harap kami. Hilong-hilong naman kami doon sa lapit, di ba? Uh, pero safe kami. Alam nyo eh, delikado yan. Huwag yan, ako. Huwag kayo, huwag ganyan. Iahatid mo yung girlfriend mo sa bahay nila, tapos tulog na yung mami at daddy, madilim, doon ka na lang sa labas ng gate. Huwag na, uwi ka na. O dito na lang ako, uwi na ako. Bakit? Madilim. Takot ako sa dilim. <laughs> uwi ka na. Layo ka sa kasalanan. Run away from it. Because the devil wants you hand in hand combat with him. Gusto niya yan. Kaya your job is to fight him from a distance. And the only way to fight the devil is to follow Jesus. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, sikuhi mo, follow Jesus. Uulitin ko yung tanong ko noon. Sino sa inyo dito ang takot sa ipis? Taas ang kamay. Huwag kayo mahiya. Takot sa ipis, ha? Ayan. Mga takot sa ipis. Huwag kayo mag-alala. Ang mga aswang nga, takot sa ipis eh. Di ba? Tayo pa. Okay lang yan matakot sa ipis, ha? Kasi ang aswang, pag nagbabagong anyo, nagiging pusa o aso, may nakita na ba kayong aswang na naging ipis? Wala, di ba? Research says that 25% of people are afraid of cockroaches much more than they are afraid of crime and death. Talaga? Oo. Mas takot sila sa ipis kaysa sa krimen. And scientists will tell you that cockroaches have almost zero chances of hurting you. Do you agree? Nasakta na ba kayo ng ipis? Kung meron man yung dumi na dadapo sa inyo at virus, maniwala kayo sa lahat ng inaral ng mga scientists, wala hong namatay sa dapo ng ipis. Pero bakit maraming tao ang takot sa kanila? Tanong nyo sa akin, bakit? Our fear is all in our head. Cockroaches have no power over us. Walang kapangyarihan ng ibis sa atin. We are 100 times bigger than the biggest cockroach in the world. Ang two years old na bata, apakal lang niya ang ibis, tigok, patay. Yet, somehow, it has power over us. Tama ba? Yung mga takot sa ipis, di ba? Nakita niyo yung ipis, lumipad. Wah! 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 No, binitawan yung baby. Wah! Ayan na! May ipis ah! May ipis! Di ba? Zero chance of hurting you. Zero chance. Hindi ka maaano ng sakit niyan. You are a hundred times bigger than it. Bakit natatakot tayo? Where does the power come from? Bakit may kapangyarihan ng maliit na ipis na yan? Saan galing yan? Tanong niyo sa akin, saan? Sa atin. 
Binigyan natin siya ng kapangyarihan. Papano? By our fear. Listen, I'm going somewhere. The devil has no power over you. The devil is a defeated foe. Here's what I believe. I believe strongly in this. Evil does not have power unless it borrows from your fear. Nagkakapangyarihan yan pag hinihiram yan sa takot mo. Yung kurtinang gumalaw, walang kapangyarihan yan, gumalaw lang yan. Bakit takot ka, pinahiram mo ng kapangyarihan? Yung ipis na lumilipad, binigyan mo ng kapangyarihan. Stop lending the devil your power. Sikuhin mo yung katabi mo, sabi mo, stop lending. Lalo na kung yan ang business mo, ha? Let me shock you. Are you ready for this? Let me shock you. Okay, bigyan mo ako ng background. Ano, na yan. Let, are you ready to be shocked? Yes? Are you sure? Humawa kayo sa upuan niyo, ha? Baka malaglag kayo. Ready? Do not fear the devil. Because the devil is actually afraid of you. <laughs> Sayin takot sa iyo. Because the devil fears God. Yes? And God lives in you. God lives in you. I know the devil exists. Alam ko yan. Alam ko may ginagawa yung mga kabalastugan sa buhay natin. But I don't focus on the devil. I focus on God. And God takes care of my enemies. Walk tall, walk strong, because you are bigger than you think you are. You are. You are bigger. So ngayon, kung may nangyayari sa buhay niyo, huwag niyo palagi sabihin, yung demonyo, inano ko, ikakaya niyan, takot sa'yo yan eh. Huwag mo siyang pansinin. Pansinin mo yung ginagawa ng Diyos sa'yo. Pansin, yun ang tingnan mo. Anong ginagawa ng Diyos sa'yo? Tapos yun ang pag-usapan niyo. Wag yung mga lahat ng problema na lang, yun ang palagi niyong pinag-uusapan. Pag-usapan niyo yung ginawa ng Diyos sa inyong buhay. Scripture says in Colossians, Christ is in me. Sabi niyo nga, Christ is in me. If you're going to read the whole book of Colossians, Colossians is what we are talking about. Sabi sa Colossians si San Pablo, Oo, meron mga espirito. Pero ang pinakamalakas na Espiritu ay ang Diyos. And Christ lives in me. Colossians is like Sikihor. Aklan Kapis. Alam niyo yan? Pag sinabi ko yung mga salitang yan, ano pumapasok sa isip niyo? Lugar kung saan nandyan ang mga aswang, mga multo. Di ba? Ang Colossia ay ganyan din. Ang daming naniniwala na maraming espiritu dito, biglang nagtayo ang simbahan doon. At yan ang sinulat ni San Pablo sa kanila. Oo, meron nga yan. Pero ang pinakamalakas espiritu ay ang Diyos. The highest spirit is God. So do not be afraid of them because Christ is in me. That's it. That's it. Do not be afraid. Many years ago, I was invited to go to Brunei to, to give two days seminar on Life in the Spirit seminar. Ito yung very spiritual, ano, ang pangalan ng community nila, ilaw ng Pangino, na, ni Jesus. Imagine, light of Jesus. Parehong pareho, tinagalog lang. No? So punta ako doon, two days, ako yung magtutok lahat. Tapos bukas is the highlight. The next day will be the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Tapos itong hundreds of people are so excited. Ako din. So pagdating ko doon, dinala nila ako sa hotel. Tapos ito na, matutulog na ako. Nako, ang ingay sa labas nung hotel ko. Lakad ang lakad. Tapos hindi ko naintindihan yung mga salita. Sabi ko siguro, mga Asian ito, maingay. Di ba? Ganyan, ganyan. So hindi ako makatulog mabuti. Pero talaga, sige, tinakpa ko na lang tenga, tulog ako. Tapos na, the next day, talk na ako. Ito na, game. 
Pagkatapos ng talk na, pagod na ako. Tulog na ako ulit. Kasi may the next second day, that's the baptism. Tulog na ako, alam nyo. Matutulog na ako, malalim na ng konti tulog ko. Biglang may narinig ako, ganun, gigising ako bigla. Tapos ano yun? So kinabahan ako, tapos mamaya antok na ako, bigla, ganun, gigising ako. Habi ko, ano ba yun? Asan ba yun? Tapos napansin ko yung aircon ko, yung aircon parang sira, nagsasalita. Yung, ganyan, no? Sabi ko, kumusta ka na, ganun. No? So, talagang, ano ba to? Kakatakot. Kinakabahan ako. Habi ko, ano ba yan? Dibali. Tapos dasal ako, Lord, patulugin niyo ako. Ha? Hindi ako pwedeng hindi matulog dito. Patay ako bukas. Imagine niyo kung puyat ako. Diba? So, Lord, tulog ako. Tapos yung malalim na ako, ganun na naman yung aircon. Sinara ko nga. Tapos natulog na ako. Kinabukasan, nagising na ako. Okay na, malakas na ako ulit. Tapos dasal ako sa mga tao. Tapos nung umuwi na ako ulit, kasama ko na yung pinsan nila Lane. Sinamahan lang nila ako eh. Habi na, like, will bring you to to your hotel. Alam yun, naglalakad kami ganun. Sabi nung anak, mga anak niyang batang baba, lalaki, dalawa, Mommy, let's bring Tito Arun in our house na lang. Let him stay there and sleep there. Naririnig ko eh. Habi niya, why? Look at this. This is not a hotel. This looks like a mental institution. Alam mo, nung tinignan ko, parang dududum, puti lahat. It, it dawned on me. Ito yung napapanood ko sa pelikula. Oo nga. Tapos binuksan ko yung kwarto ko, kinuha ko na yung gamit ko. Sige, doon na lang tayo sa palasyo nyo. Halika na, alis na ako. Tapos kinausap ko yung sa hotel. Sabi ko, you know, the other day, there are a lot of people talking outside. They're so noisy. Alam mo, sabi niya, really? Yeah. They were just walking in my hallway. And then, yung receptionist, sabi, ah, you, you were alone in that building. I go, really? Yeah, you were alone. Sabi ko, why did you put me there? I was alone the whole building. Ako lang pala doon. Walang nakatira doon. Lahat ng ibang ano, nandun sa kabilang building. Pero ang tanong, nagpatalo ba ako? Focus on what God is doing. The devil is afraid of you because Jesus, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, is inside you. Can you put your hand over your heart like this? Sabi niyo, Christ is in me. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, Christ is in you. So from now on, make the devil insignificant. Instead of focusing on how strong he is, focus on how strong God is. What you focus on, remember, grows. That's why I don't pay attention to what a defeated foe is doing. I pay attention to the winner, to Jesus. Because when I focus on Jesus, I let Him take care of my enemies because I am bigger than I think I am. And you are bigger than you think you are. Amen? Let's all stand, brothers and sisters. When we started this series weeks ago, pinag-uusapan namin mga builders yan eh. Ang FIS PICC, siguro mga two days before their feast, they were canceled in their venue. PICC ha? Hinansel ho. Two days before. So Friday, sinabihan na sila, wala na hong feast kayo ngayong linggo. Bakit? Ang meral ko ho, pinuto lang kami ng kuryente. Apat na araw, inaayos nila. Saan pupunta ang feast PICC? 11,000 ho umaaten doon. sa sila pupunta in two, two days? Alam nyo, from all angles, this was an impossible situation when you look at it. How can they look for another venue in two days? Diba? 11,000? Saan mo ilalagay doon? Kami, nasa Amerika kami niyan eh. Si Bo was there, I was there. And the other builders were here dealing with that. You know, we heard some say, this is a demonic oppression. This is a demonic attack. Why? Because the devil hates, clearly hates, the new talk series, Angels and Demons. 
So tinanong ko kay Bobo, anong masasabi mo dyan? Inaatake tayo ng kalaban. Alam niyo, sagot ng leader natin. Sabi niya, well, stuff happens. Whether the devil did it or not, it's not the most important question. The most important question is, what is God doing? Grabe yun. Paradigm shift sa atin yun. Na ano, ibig sa pag-usapan natin, grabe talaga yung kalaban, no? tinira tayo, dalawa araw, paano tayo lilipat yan? We focus on what God is doing. So we let the people here know na, oh, we're praying for you, but look at what God will do. And you know, in an instant, they were able to transfer to Manila Hotel. Nag-feast sila saan? Sa Manila Hotel. Nakalipat sa Manila Hotel. Na-imagine nyo, doon sila pupunta ngayon. Ito na ang kwento. Meron doon, 11,000 ang attendees eh, ng buong feast PICC o Bay Area. Nung nag-announce sila ng two days, lilipat tayo sa Manila Hotel. Alam nyo ba nangyari? 11,000, 200 ang dumating. Nadagdagan pa sila ng 200. Look what God is doing. Bakit sila nadagdagan ng 200? Yung mga 200 na yon, isyoso, tinitingnan nila kung may multo sa Manila Hotel. No? Yun ang ginawa nila. May multo ba rito? No? Dumating yung mga tao. Tapos may mga kwentong lumabas na. na ano, mayroong isang pamilya na talagang gusto nilang umatin sama-sama sa PICC. Hindi sila magkakita-kita. Nung inannounce sa Manila Hotel, nagulat yung iba. Pupunta rin ako Manila Hotel yan. Puntahan, nagkita-kita sila ron. Ang daming kwentong ganun. Look, what God is doing. Don't pay attention to what the devil is doing. Pay attention to what your God is doing. And believe that no matter what happens, God works for good with those who love Him. Focus on Jesus. And the best way to defeat the devil is to follow Jesus. In the name of the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, Amen. Close your eyes and bow down your head. Believe God is here and God has spoken His word to you. That you are bigger than who you think you are. Because you are His child. You are a child of God. Surrender everything to Him now. Your trials, your troubles, your fears, your rejections, your pain. Surrender all your dreams to Him. And let your spirit say that Christ is enough for you. Oh yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I will follow you. I will say yes to you, oh God.
hands to God's love, lift up your dreams, let me pray for you. Father in heaven, these are our dreams. All of them is all about you, O God. Even they are to answer my prayers and my needs, they are all for you. Because I want to give glory to you alone. And I believe you will say yes to them. And I believe resources are coming to answer my prayers, to answer my dreams. And I claim this in your name. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a big hand. Bless His name. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Can you embrace people around you again and tell them, let's follow Jesus. Give the Lord a big hand again. Bless His name. Thank you, Father. Bless His name. Let's be seated as we prepare for our giving. Okay, so first we would like to call on our new attendees. If this is your first time to attend Feast Bellevue, may, may we see your hands please so we can welcome you. First timers, ayan. Welcome po to the feast. Let's give them a big hand. Can we pray for you? Can you stand up wherever you are? Pagdarasal lang po namin kayo. Sige na po, okay, mahiya. Yeah, palakpakan natin ulit sila. Welcome to our Feast Bellevue family. Let's extend our hands towards them, dear brothers and sisters. In the name of the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, Amen. Lord God, we praise and we thank you for new members of our family whom you have called each by name for a special purpose because you, have, you want them to hear your word today. Lord, we pray... That whatever it is that troubles their hearts, or their minds, oh God, we pray for your peace. We pray for, for better things to come in their lives, oh God. Whatever they're praying for, manifest your love to them. And may they be back here again next week so they can continuously experience and nourish, be nourished by your word and be blessed by our love here in Feast Bellevue. This we ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Before you sit down, our ushers are handing over some welcome stubs. You can exchange them later for a welcome gift. You can just follow po yung new attendees na sign after the final song. Again, welcome to Feast Bellevue. Thank you very much po. Now, we would like to call on all the singles. May we, pat kamay, kaway, kaway nga mga singles. Woo! Yeah, hallelujah. Meron pong shout. Singles Gathering. All singles are invited to an exciting singles gathering every fifth Sunday of the month, starting October 29, 2017. That's next week. It will be held at the Laguna Ballroom of Bellevue. First session will start at 9 a.m. and second session at 10.40, so simultaneous with our feast session. We would also like to invite all solo parents and Flame uh, Ministry for uh, one Talk on, ang title po ng talk ay Alamin Ang Karapatan. This will be held this Saturday, October 28, 1 to 4 p.m. at Feast Alabang Center in Festival Mall, katabi po ng Derm Strata across Jollibee. Please register at Solo Parent Table at the Tower Wing. We also would like to invite the seniors, citizens, mga gracious living ministry po. We have a seminar on healing emotional woundedness. This will be on November 10. Also at our Feast Alabang Center in Festival Mall. So you can inquire outside if you have, if you're interested to join. Also, singles ulit, mga singles, meron tayong Love Life Retreat on November 4 to 5. This is a very nice retreat, an encounter of yourself. Hindi po para magka-love life, but for you to be able to love your life more. It will be held at the James St. James Retreat House in Tagaytay with an investment fee of 2800 And last announcement, we have an upcoming Holy Land pilgrimage na to be led by Brother Arun. This will be a 10-day pilgrimage on November 7 to 17. If you have... If you are interested to join, you may look for Sister Bell Protasio. All right. Were you blessed by this series, dear friends? Yes. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, we'll see you next Sunday. See you next Sunday. Okay, let's all stand up now for our love offering as I call on Brother Arun.
the Lift up your envelopes, please, your tithe envelope and your love offering. Just lift it up, bow down your head. <laughs> Father in heaven, these are our offering to you, our symbol of trust. We surrender our lives to you, Lord. As we give to you these things, use them for your greater glory. And multiply this and give this back to my brothers and sisters a hundredfold to bless them in their lives. This is our prayer. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Come, brothers and sisters, with joy, give to the Lord. Over.